Welcome back everybody to another episode of Retro Revival where we try and bring classic games back to life. In today's episode we're going to be reviving the stealth action classic and one of my favorites, the original Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell should boot up just fine without any adjustments, but the game does not support widescreen resolutions, and there's a few graphical issues with things like flashlights and various other important lighting effects that can directly affect the gameplay that absolutely need to be fixed. We're also going to look into getting the controller to function properly, something that can be difficult due to Splinter Cell's reliance on variable speeds with different degrees of joystick inputs. So step 1, install Splinter Cell. You can buy Splinter Cell from Steam or Uplay, but for this guide I'll be using the Steam version. You can pick up the game for $10 now, but it's often on sale in a pack with the other games, so it's worth waiting for a good deal. Step 2, download DG Voodoo Fix. This fix will not only fix the game's resolution and HUD placement, but also the broken buffered shadows that aren't supported by newer hardware. These shadows must be fixed, otherwise you won't be able to see spotlights in the game world, which can result in an instant death from snipers. Using the link in the description, download the DG Voodoo Fix and place the contents of the zipped file into your Splinter Cell directory. When you run Splinter Cell, you should get a prompt to update the mod in a small window. Tell it to replace any files and let it download the updates. Once it's complete, restart the game and now it should boot up into your native resolution with all the necessary fixes done for you. You can play around in game to see if everything's working properly and you'll know it is if you see shadows and lighting like this in the opening scene. If you see a weird white cross in the center of your screen while playing, then this means the Unreal Engine has lost focus. Simply Alt-Tab and open the window again to fix this minor annoyance. Step 3. Download PlayStation 3 HD Textures When Splinter Cell re-released on the PlayStation 3, the game received several high-resolution textures that can be applied directly to the PC version of the game as well. Use the same link as before, and in this time, click on the down arrow next to the download button. You should see an option called HD Textures from PS3 version. Download the textures and simply drag and drop these files into the textures folder in your Splinter Cell directory. Overwrite any pre-existing files and now you should have high resolution textures in your game. Step 4, add controller support. Splinter Cell doesn't have any native controller support for Xbox or PlayStation controllers, but we can use third party programs like Pinnacle Game Profiler or Xpatter to get the buttons functioning correctly. First, set all the basic buttons for your controller, including face buttons, d-pad, triggers, and shoulder buttons. Remember that on the controller, the A button, or X if you're using a PlayStation controller, functions as both the interact key and the reload key, so make sure you bind both commands to this function for it to work properly. You can also set the camera movement to the right joystick. If you're using Pinnacle, make sure you disable joystick acceleration in Pinnacle's preferences and enable mouse smoothing. It won't be perfect, but it's the closest you can get to mimicking the console version's camera movement. Next is the hard part, getting the left joystick to move Sam correctly. In the PC version of Splinter Cell, speed of the character is controlled by the mouse wheel. This is important because you need to be able to change your speed in-game to avoid being detected. You want the left joystick to move Sam more naturally, so we're going to go into the Splinter Cell user.ini file in the game's system directory and add these two lines of code to the Joy X and Joy Y axis. This will use the game's own native joystick support, so make sure your third party program has absolutely nothing mapped to the left joystick. Once all of this is set up, make sure the Splinter Cell profile you created is running whenever you start the game in order to play the game with controller support. Step 5 In game adjustments. Boot up the game and start a new game if you haven't already. Use the tutorial to test to make sure all of your controls are correct and confirm that shadows, HD textures, and your resolution are all functioning correctly. If your character seems to only move at one speed, use your scroll mouse and scroll up until he starts to move correctly with the joystick. After doing this, you should be able to adjust Sam's speed using the joystick. Don't forget to alt tab when you start playing to get rid of that Unreal Engine crosshair that will occasionally appear. Because of this, you're going to need to make sure you have a keyboard and mouse handy if you ever need it. Of course, you can always avoid a lot of these issues if you just use a mouse and keyboard from the start and ignore controller support altogether, but that's up to you. So let's just review all the things that we've done. Step 1, install Splinter Cell. Step 2, download DG Voodoo Fix. Step 3, download PS3 HD textures. Step 4, add controller support. And Step 5, in-game adjustments. Now you should be ready to enjoy your newly fixed Splinter Cell. If you followed this guide correctly, you should have widescreen support, adjusted field of view, fixed lighting effects, HD textures, and full controller support. If you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know, but in the meantime, I hope this video was helpful, and be sure to like and subscribe for more Retro Revival.